What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a tour of my personal Hackintosh. I get a ton of questions about the hardware I use in my personal build and I just recently switched my case, so I figured what better time than now to give you guys a quick tour. Getting right into it, the case I switched to is the Corsair 600T. This case offers a ton of space to work, a great look, as well as tons of cooling. A big reason I switched to this case from my Power Mac G5 case is front I.O. The Power Mac G5 only has one front USB, which I found pretty limiting. The front I.O. of the 600T offers four USB 2.0 ports in addition to a fan controller, which is quite useful when exporting videos. Turning the case 180 degrees, the back features the rear I.O. of my motherboard, the display outputs for my GPU, as well as the back of my power supply. The rear I.O. consists of two PS2 ports, optical and coaxial SPDIF, CMOS reset, Firewire 400 and 800, 6 USB 2.0 ports, 2 USB 3.0 ports, Ethernet, as well as traditional audio outputs. Now let's take off this side panel and have a look at the components inside. Here's a quick overview of the hardware and I'm sure the component that stuck out to you was that mammoth of a CPU cooler. The cooler I'm using is the Scythe Mugen 2 Revision B. I got this cooler about 2 years ago and it's offered some pretty good performance since. Sitting under that cooler is the CPU itself. I'm using the Intel Core i7-930. This is a socket 1366 chip which isn't the newest nowadays, but it still handles just about anything I throw at it. The motherboard in my build is the Gigabyte X58A UD3R. This motherboard uses socket 1366 processors on the X58 chipset. There's no integrated video, but this board was meant for sheer performance back in its prime about 2 or 3 years ago. Despite being a few years old, this board still offers a good amount of features and performance. Although this motherboard features 10 SATA ports, the SATA 3 ports use the Marvell controller, which is one of the slowest SATA controllers available. With that said, it's still nice having the expandability of all these ports. For memory, I'm using 12GB of Corsair XMS3. For the things I do, I really wouldn't want to have any less, and I will definitely upgrade to more when I build my new system in the coming months. Jumping down to the GPU, I'm using the Gigabyte AMD Radeon HD6850. This card features 1GB of GDDR5 memory, as well as a pretty nice cooling system. I've had this card running for almost 2 years now, and while it's getting pretty dated, it still performs fairly well. For storage, I'm using a 120GB Intel 330 SSD for my boot drive, a 1TB Western Digital Blue drive for storage, as well as a 500GB Seagate drive for a scratch disk. I have a pretty standard HP optical drive installed, but I can't even remember the last time it was used. I simply don't have many needs for optical media anymore. Powering all of my hardware is a Corsair TX650. Unfortunately, this isn't a modular power supply, but I feel that I've managed all the cables fairly well. This unit has been a reliable source of power for about two and a half years now, which is what's most important. Now that you've seen the hardware that makes up my machine, let's see how it does on the benchmarks. Throughout these benchmarks, keep in mind that I've overclocked my i7 from 2.8GHz to 3.5GHz. After letting Geekbench do its thing, it spits out a score of just about 12,000. As stated earlier, this isn't the most modern system out there, but 12,000 on Geekbench is still capable of quite a bit. Moving on to Cinebench, let's start off with an OpenGL test. The AMD Radeon HD6850 got a score of just under 42 frames per second. Moving on to the CPU portion of the test, the score came out to be just over 6 CPU points, which isn't terrible, but kind of low compared to today's processors. With that said, I'm still plenty able to produce HD YouTube content at a pretty fast pace. So there you guys have it, this has been a tour of my personal Hackintosh. Although it's not top of the line nowadays, it still handles all of my needs quite well. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here soon.